Okay, hey everybody, it's uh, Vince with Green Joe Coffee Truck. Thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna kick out a video on how to get started with low or no credit, basically low or bad credit um, and, and no money in, in the coffee truck industry and you know how to get yourself moving along in that direction. I'm gonna ask at some point, if you find that this video is valuable to you, would you do me a favor and hit the like? What it does is it tricks Google into uh, YouTube into spreading the video a little bit more. So it'll it'll help people that are out there. So, um, so let's kind of get started on this. Now, kind of what I'm thinking of in terms of someone that wants to get started in the coffee truck industry, maybe they are, you know, they had a couple of hiccups with their credit and what they're looking on doing is trying to get uh, a, a, a coffee truck. Now, if you got no money and you have bad credit and, and you're, you're you're thinking, okay, maybe I can get someone to live, lend me 50 grand. I'm not telling you that's impossible, but it's, it's difficult to do. I don't, I, you know, it's going to be hard. You'll have to know someone probably personally. I don't think uh, there are very many financial institutions that are going to just hand out that money. And I personally haven't heard of things like grants or, um, you know, free money out there. I know some people have said there is, but, but I haven't seen it. So for me, what I'm, what I wanted to do is basically try to create a pathway for those of you that this is a dream of yours and you want to get started into this, but you're not quite sure how to do it, you know? And so I think because, because, you know, in all equations of life, it's like, you'll either have the money or you'll have the time. Right. And so if you don't have the money, then, then it's going to take time. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease and some hard work and just some patience to get through it. So let me kind of, paint the picture on, on how to do that. So uh, I'm going to share my screen with you here so you kind of get a, get a view on. Let's see here. Yeah, so let's just pop this in. Okay, cool. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, you need to uh, start a business, right? So I would encourage looking into LLCs. Um, I, I'm a big advocate of an LLC. It separates you financially from your business so if something happens with your business and you acquire a debt or a liability or a lawsuit it's not going to affect your personal finances and so it's good to have that separation so i'm going to encourage you to to, to look into an llc um this is llcuniversity.com and they have you know a bunch of different links here that you can just click on and, and they'll walk you through the process it literally took me 24 hours to start one and i did it 100 percent online super easy so then from there, you're going to take the, the state ID number that they give you. You're going to go down to your local um, city or county and you're going to start up. You're going to start a business with your city. So I live in Albuquerque. This is my Albuquerque business registration website. Looks like everything can be done here online. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You just, you know, complete your business registration, hit the link and then just follow the directions. There's nothing crazy about that. They're then going to give you a business um, ID number. And then from there, um, you'll you'll be able to start a business bank account. And that's really the first step on establishing the relationship with the bank. It's just starting a bank account with the bank. So best bank accounts for small business. I threw that into Google and this is what it came up with. I got this one right here, top six noteworthy banks. And it looks like the best overall is Chase, um, but you have some runners up there. There's B of A or Bank of America. I see that pretty commonly. Uh, consumer credit union looks like it's the best credit union. I've also heard of Navy, um, but that's in there. Um, Axos, which is a new company for me. I'm not familiar with it. They may just be uh, merging and trying to uh, get some new, you know, some some market share. So they might have some perks. That might be something to look into. Uh, here's another one that I looked at. Um, this one has Wells Fargo as ranked as number one for branch accessibility. I would probably agree to them on that one. Chase, Capital One, there's that Axos again, Consumer Credit Union popped up there again. So those are all um, things to look at. So yeah, you just wanna kind of look uh, into um, a business uh, bank account. One of the things that I'm gonna encourage looking into is seeing if this big business bank account reports to Dun & Bradstreet. And what Dun & Bradstreet is, is it's the Business Credit Reporting Bureau. So, you know, in personal uh, credit reporting, we're all familiar with like TransUnion and Experian. Um, these credit reporting agencies. Well, in the business world, it's it's this done in Bradstreet. So you want to start a bank account with a business that's going to report to this because as I understand it, um, when you get commercial loans, 
and you do well with them, they speed up your credit recovery faster than, than personal loans. So uh, this is definitely something that you'll want to look into beginning to establish so that you can kind of get on that road to recovery. Um, there's their, their website is DNB, that's Delta November Bravo.com. And so, uh, you know, check them out, um, kind of see what they're all about. But ultimately, your banking institution, you're going to want to find something that reports to these guys so it can get you back on your feet. And then from there, um, it's acquiring some type of uh, credit loan, some type of business loan. So for me, I just threw in Google best credit cards for bad business or, or excuse me, bad credit or no credit. And that's what I got. So Wells Fargo pops up there, BBVA, um, Capital One, Discover. Um, you know, so there's a couple different ones. There's some unsecured and secured loans. I should probably talk about the difference between those two. So un a, a secured loan is when you give the bank or you lend the bank, you give the bank like 500 bucks and then they lend it back to you in, in payments. They charge you interest. So basically what you're doing is you're paying to show that you can pay on time. That's really what a secured loan is. And, you know, when you get a secure loan, maybe you might start off with like 500 bucks. You pay that off. You don't want to pay it off early. You want to you want to kind of allow them to get their interest on you because they need to make a little bit money of money out of this exchange. So you pay your bill on time. You make sure you hit it on time every time, you know, and then uh, at the end of the secured loan, then you make a larger secure loan. So you start building your credit history with the bank. OK, um, so if you don't if you don't have anything right away, pro like like you're like, hey, Vance, I got no money in my pocket. And this is something I want to get started on because I'm, I'm a firm believer. It's better to start um, than wait. You know, it's like a lot of folks want to wait for the perfect scenario. It's never going to happen. You know, often what you do is you you jump in and you figure out how to swim is kind of one of the, so, you know, with um, credit cards, usually you can find a, uh, a bank that will loan you um, some money on a credit card. Usually it's only like 500 bucks, but then you can actually get started. And that's, that's really important. So let's say the, the credit gives me 500 bucks. I now have uh, 500 bucks in credit card. Uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy equipment with that. I'll show you what I'm going to buy in just a second. But uh, okay, so you know, we start establishing some type of credit with the bank, either a loan or a credit card. One of the things I do want to point out to you guys is the CDFIs or Community Development Financial Institutions. This is a government run um, program by the U.S. Department of Treasury. Um, there's probably one in your city if you live in a major city and what they are is they're a nonprofit organization that helps people that are that have kind of lower credit or riskier credit or no credit and they kind of help them get on their feet and develop businesses. So, you know, if you're not familiar with these guys, if you haven't contacted your local, I would encourage you to do it because they're going to really help kind of create that roadmap for you um, and give you kind of that step by step guidance to getting off of your feet from low money, no money to um, to an established business that has some 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 money coming through. So I'm um, looking at these guys CDFI. All right. So they gave me let's just go back and say, OK, I, I now have a credit card for 500 bucks. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to hit the farmers markets or some other type of small venue that I can do on the weekends while I'm working my day job. OK, um, so let's just pop up. This is a, a my Amazon account. Um, basically, I went through and just threw some stuff in my cart. So you can kind of see what I would get started with, right? So the first thing I would start with, assuming that you're um, that uh, you you know, uh, I'd, I'd like to assume that most of you have a, a car. So um, here, this is a uh, folding table. It's a four foot folding table, so it will fold up and fit into your trunk or fit into your back seat. Okay. Um, so I would probably start off with that. It's forty bucks. Um, I would add a uh, table cover to it. Um, I think in the cart here I have a six foot one. I, I wouldn't want a six foot. I would want something that actually fits the table. <laughs> so that's my bad. Um, but yeah, you, you you know get a tablecloth for it. Um, these uh, 1.75 gallon beverage dispensers right here. Um, these is what I would use to sell cold brew lattes. Um, I did this at farmers market. Uh, I've done it for years and it works great. So the cold brew recipes are on my website um, in the starter guide. That's free. Just go to the website, greenjoecoffeetruck.com. 
um, and click on starter guide and you got to put in your email and then I will send you um, the cold brew recipes. And so basically you can sell cold brew lattes out of these things. And I sold them for five, six bucks a piece, you know, and they cost you about a buck is what it costs to put one out. So, um, so it's a good markup. A uh, little fancy tablecloth right here. That's 20 bucks. Um, coffee bar. Oh, sorry. Going back to the beverage dispensers, you'll probably need three of them. That's probably what you're going to look on getting. Uh, a little coffee bar sign, uh, a little square reader so you can just accept credit cards on your phone. A little apron, which also acts as two things. One, an advertisement sign because it says coffee. And then that pocket, that's essentially my cash drawer. I carry my ones in there. And then when I get some 20s, I just put them in my wallet, you know, so it doesn't look like I'm holding this big old wad of cash, essentially. I don't want to, you know, market to everybody that I got a bunch of money on me. So, um, but that's what I use for um, for my change drawer, essentially. I just, you know, keep my ones on the inside, keep my large bills on the outside. Pretty simple. Um, some fake plants, little succulent plants for aesthetic appeal and make it look cute. Um, this is a five gallon beverage dispenser. So it's a hundred bucks. You might be able to find them for about 10, 15 bucks cheaper on eBay. Um, but most of the time they're used. But um, if you're looking on doing the winters, then you're probably going to need this, uh, two of them, one for um, hot chocolate, one for hot coffee. Um, and then most health departments will, I, I don't think I've ever seen a health department that will allow you to set up without a, a hand washing station pretty much everyone needs a hand washing station so um uh, this is a little gatorade beverage cooler it's made by coleman um, and a lot of health departments will allow you to use this that's this is actually pretty popular um the negative thing about this is that little spigot right there that's a push pin spigot so um you need to swap it out with this with the spigot that i have right above it and uh because that one's at um uh you know it's not contact list, but essentially you can just flip it on and wash your hands. Most health departments will allow you to have the ones that you have to push because you can't wash your hands at the same time. So, and then a five gallon bucket. This one's 12 bucks. You can get them for five bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, a cold brew um, uh, five gallon uh, bucket. So 40 bucks for that one. And then up here is a portable um, cooler. Um, this one's by Coleman and that one's 45 bucks. I, I, this one I have for my personal use. I like it. I, you know, I have other fancier ones yet, like Yeti knockoffs and stuff, but oddly enough, this one does just as good as all those other ones and it's smaller. It'll fit into your back seat and it's easy to carry. You can lift it. Um, and that the handle extends and it's got a set of wheels on it. And I like that the spigot is on the back on the bottom, the, the opening so it's easy to drain so i'm a big advocate of that so it's just something to look at but you're gonna have to keep your milk cold essentially so you'll need something for for your milk um or or your, your drinks and then um all that came out to 400 bucks so if you got a 500 hundred dollar credit card you're gonna be sitting pretty you'll still have an extra 100 bucks um to play with and you know ideally what you want to do is you want to you know get your equipment um, get that credit card paid down to about 30% and then just make your minimum payments after that and just let the credit build. Um, you don't want to have your credit cards filling up too much of um, your authorized credit because they look at that negatively. So, um, so yeah, so I would start off with the farmer's markets or wherever you can set up and start selling on the weekends. Um, basically, the money that you make from there, you'll want to set it aside. Don't Don't bring it into your personal account. Just set it aside. You'll have to use it for your cost of goods, right? You're to resupply. Um, but for the most part, you want to just let that bank account grow. And then when you're ready, probably the next logical step for me would be moving to, a, to an actual espresso cart. So let's kind of take a look at that. Um, so this is a good uh, espresso cart setup, I think. Um, this one's from espressoparts.com. You can go take a look at their stuff. There's so much out there on how to build these things, but I think you can get one built out easily less than five grand. So if you rocked, you know, let's just say you rock the farmer market all all summer. Um, the average farmer market, I make about 500 bucks um, and there's about 4,000 people at the farmer's market. But there's also another coffee vendor and he's usually located in a better place than me. I wasn't even supposed to be there. The only reason they let me set up is because I started by offering free coffee educational courses 
what I would do is I would go into the farmer's market and show people how to do pour over coffee. And then I would just sample it. And eventually one of those samples made it to the, um, the director's hand. And he was like, this is good coffee. The other thing I did is, so I would do the, the courses and then all the volunteers, I gave them a free cup, right? So, so what, what ended up happening is, you know, my coffee started spreading around and they said, Hey, would you like to set up? And I said, sure. And they're like, okay, well, our normal coffee guy is not going to be here on this day. Why don't you come in and set up so that the place has coffee? And, you know, the thing about that is you, you, you show up early. You're the first person at that door. It's yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You pay your bills on time. You're friendly to everyone. You give the vendors a discount and, and you win them over through just good, business practices. You don't necessarily need anything fancy. You need to have a good cup of coffee, but I didn't have any whipped cream and cinnamon or anything fancy on it. I just good business practices. Be on time, have a good product at a fair price and have a smile and you'll be surprised at how far that gets you. So, you know, you hit the farmers market 500 bucks a weekend, you rock it all summer, we'll call that 12 weeks. At the end of the 12 weeks, you got six grand to spend. So what do you do? Do you just spend it all? No. You again go back to your bank and say, I'd like to get a secured loan. I have this much money. Will you lend me this much money? I'll I'll let you, you know, please borrow my money and lend it back to me. You pay the interest on that. But again, what you're doing is you're establishing a relationship with your bank. So they say, okay, sure. Let me have your five grand. I'll lend it back to you at whatever 10% interest. Okay. And then from there, I would take that money and move into an espresso cart, you know. And so this is a pretty sweet little setup that they have here. You can see like there's a couple water tanks in here. You know, that's maybe two, four hundred bucks for the water tanks. That looks like a water softener in there. There's a water pump back there. We're just going to call that another 300 bucks. Um, this is a indoor tankless propane water heater. I don't know if that's propane kind of speaking. I don't see a propane tank, so it may be electric. And then this is all their, you know, for their water, um, uh, softener and stuff. And up here I can see that they have a little rinser. So nice little setup. Another little setup I wanted to show you these guys here, the three pines coffee. I think they did a great job. Nice little espresso machine. If I had to guess, that was probably a La Mazorco mini. Uh, Linea Mini, those are pretty pricey. You're looking at four grand use for those things. And then this looks like a coffee dispenser or a grinder. I'm not quite sure, but good little setup here. Some pastry stuff, some cute little lights. Um, looks like this is just a little um, canopy tent. And then these are probably little uh, pine boards that they bring in and zip tie is what I'm seeing there. I think this this setup is absolutely wonderful. This right here, just looking at it, because of the espresso machine, it's probably pretty pricey. I'm guessing this is probably about a seven or eight grand setup. You can easily do this for less. Um, this one is my my coffee cart that I had built on the Ultimate Coffee Cart. Um, I made this out of laminate flooring as opposed to um, wood pallets because it's lightweight. I wanted to build something that a woman would be able to move around easily, so I went with the laminate. Um, I have a hand washing sink right here. I have a little uh, coffee rinse right here. That's my knock box. This is a Faima that I bought off of Craigslist used. I got this one for 300 bucks and refurbished it and painted it. You can easily buy something like this, bring it to your espresso technician. They'll probably charge you another five, 600 bucks to refurbish it and clean it out and everything. But still, you'll be sitting pretty for less than a thousand bucks for an espresso machine. I got my grinder in there for free. Um, so yeah, that's something that you can easily do. And then, uh, you start rocking the espresso cart. You may have to rock the cart for a whole year before you get enough money to buy a trailer. Um, but you rock the cart, you do weddings, you do indoor events, you do outdoor events, you do, um, corporate, you reach out to all the sales, um, uh, you know, the, the insurance companies, travel companies, people that have sales quotas that they need to make. And if you say, Hey, if they meet their quota, I'll be happy to give you a discount on coffee catering. Um, blah, blah, blah. Right. And uh, and you pack that money away. And then once you get 10 grand, 15 grand, you do the same thing. You go to your bank, you say, hey, I'd like to get another loan. I paid off the last five grand. And this one, I'd like to get a loan for like 10, 15 grand. And hopefully you'll have that capital. And that's where you can start. Um, not only will you have that capital, you also have the collateral of the coffee cart. And then and then from there, you can look on 
moving your coffee cart into a coffee trailer. And so that's essentially what I built here was a coffee trailer. This is a converted horse trailer that I got off of Craigslist, painted it down, stuck some wood pallets on there, replaced the floors, put in some new walls. Um, a lot of handymen can do this type of work. Doesn't It's not anything special by any means. And you can see back there that that's my coffee cart sitting inside there or my espresso cart. So now essentially you have a coffee truck um, and you can start going out and hitting the markets and, and, and the, uh, uh, excuse me, the festivals and really raking in some cash. So, uh, so this is kind of a stepping stone methodology or, you know, uh, you know, it's a, it's a direction that you can take, you know, say if you're, you're sitting here and you're like, man, I want to get into this, but I don't know how to do it. Well, then this is, this is a way, a pathway that you can take to slowly start building yourself up. Is it going to take some time? Yes, it is. Is it going to take some work? Yes, it is. But Rome wasn't built in a day. And, you know, ultimately that's what it's going to take. If, if you're kind of sitting in the hole and you, you're looking for a way out, it's going to take some time to, to pull yourself out of that hole, but you can, you absolutely can. I've ran this by multiple financial advisors in our, in our courses. This is basically what we came up with. I sat down with financial advisors, actual loan officers, and this is what we've created. And so I want to share it with you because, you know, I think it's a good way to do it. Is it going to take you two years to, to get the, the the capital and the income yeah it might it might take you or who knows you might you know just hit it off right out the gate you know when i started green joe coffee literally by like my third month i was making six grand a month so you might you might take off you know it just who knows so anyhow my name is vince uh green joe coffee is the name of uh, uh green joe coffee trucks the name of the the business uh green joe coffee truck.com it's the name of my website I sell an ebook, a business plan. We do courses on, on how to help people get into coffee trucking. I hope this is help, helpful for you. Um, hit a like for me if you don't mind. And if you want to see more information, feel free to subscribe. All right, guys, you take care.